What's up, New Orleans? This is Comedy Central Stand Up Presents. Ladies and gentlemen, Emmy Blotnick. You guys want to hear about my favorite Wheel of Fortune clip? <laughs> good, okay, good. So, all right. The puzzle is mostly solved. You can tell the answer is self-portrait. And this lady buzzes in and she goes, aw, self-potato? <laughs> and the guy next to her is like, lady, it's self-portrait. And she's just like, oh no. And it's so good because self-potato means nothing, <laughs> you know? It means nothing at all. But I love it so much, I really want it to mean something. So I think this is it. You all know what a couch potato is. I, I think a self-potato is just when you don't need the couch for that to be who you are, you know? It's just taking the couch potato mentality to go, right? Because you don't need a couch when you got you. And. I don't know if that lady knew when she got that puzzle wrong that she was gonna give me a name for my lifestyle, but I am a self-potato through and through. Ooh. In case it wasn't clear, it's basically high-functioning depression. That's, all right, now we're all on the same page. I'll give you an example. Like earlier tonight, I spent about two hours in a wet towel. That is a classic self-potato move. Oh man, you guys ever do that? You ever stay in a wet towel until it's bad? You know, because it starts out good and then you're not happy anymore. Because you made all that effort to take a shower and then you're like, well, that did nothing. Oh man, I used to go out and see people and do stuff at night and now, some nights I just stay in and read Amazon reviews of things I already own? I think I'm just looking for a sense of community, you know? I'm like, I wonder who else out there is mad about my blender. Like, yeah, yeah, Rick F. from Iowa is right. The puree setting really is more of a fine chop. I think Amazon just knows me too well now. Like, my recommendations have become such a bummer. Every time I go on now, it's like, because you enjoyed the book, Fatherless Women, and I'm like, oh, Amazon, don't even finish that sentence. <laughs> and by the way, I wouldn't say I enjoyed fatherless women. <laughs> Now, sometimes I, I try to throw it off my scent a little bit by clicking on cool stuff, you know, trying to make it think I have a cool life. Put in an hour or two clicking on like snowboards and big boxes of big condoms. <laughs> I just want Amazon to think I'm busy hitting the slopes in my magnums, <laughs> you know? Just, that's right, Amazon, mama got a big old dick. I just hope next time I go on, I just want it to be like, because you bought a thousand extra large condoms, we thought you might like to hang out sometime. <laughs> hey, come grab a brewski with your old boy Amazon. <laughs> so, you know, the other night Amazon and I were DP in this chick and, uh, no, <laughs> kid, I was reading Fatherless Women, I told you. No. I, uh, I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. Do you guys ever do this? I, I, was, I was like, all right, tonight I'm, I'm going to bed early, early bedtime for me, eight o'clock, full night's rest. And then the sun was coming up and I'm like, why am I reading Kelly Clarkson's discography? Where did the night go? I did, oh, I fell deep into a Google hole. I ended up spending most of the night reading about one of her producers, this guy named Max Martin. Do you guys know who he is? A few, all right, cool. Well, the rest of you, strap in, because I know everything. So, if you don't know, Max Martin is a 46-year-old Swedish music producer, and he writes and produces all the pop music. I didn't know it was all coming from one guy, but it pretty much is. Like, he made all the 90s shit you like, like Britney Spears and the Backstreet Boys, all the dry-humping classics. 
And some good new stuff, too. He wrote and produced songs on the last two Taylor Swift albums, the Katy Perry Teenage Dream album. He has $300 million, according to Google, and I don't think that's enough. So basically, Max Martin is the reason I've ever tried on a halter top, you know? Didn't work out for me, but he made me think it could. He writes all the songs that you can't escape. You know the ones that just sort of seep into your brain whether you want them there or not? Like, I never wanted to learn the lyrics to California Girls, but I've had to wait for a prescription before. So, you know, now I know it all. But I just, it made so much sense once I saw how many songs he's responsible for. I'm like, oh, this is why all the pop songs sound the same. This is why every pop song is like, I'm a little lamb with big old titties. Because it's all written by this Swedish guy, and English is his second language. <laughs> Doesn't it make so much sense? Every day this dude wakes up and he's like, all right, Max, what a girl's like, what a girl's like, uh, lollipops, bikinis, time for lunch. Like, that's his day. <laughs> It's just crazy. So I became obsessed with him. I started reading all these interviews with him. I read all these interviews with his Swedish songwriting colleagues. And one of them, they interviewed one of his guys and they were like, how do you write all these pop songs for women? And he said, every month we read Cosmo. <laughs> Cosmo, of all things. Like, if you've ever read an issue of Cosmo, you know it's like the worst representation of women in the world. Every tip in Cosmo is like, chug a bottle of mouthwash and eat your boyfriend's butt. And you're like, this isn't my life. And I didn't know what I was doing all those times. I walked up to a newsstand and was like, Cosmo, no thanks. I'm just gonna plug in my headphones and blast it directly into my brain. I'm like, I didn't know I was walking around listening to Cosmo. So I freaked out in the middle of the night. Oh, have you guys ever freaked out so hard you made a flow chart? <laughs> cool, cool, yeah, me neither. I won't do that, no. I, I'm gonna try to walk you through this. Okay, so I started listening to pop music from a very young age, and that was how I learned what it meant to be a sexy woman. Not knowing that Max Martin and all the Swedish guys making the pop songs were reading Cosmo so they could be sexy women. <laughs> Which means, for most of my life, I've been doing a bad impression of a middle-aged Swedish guy doing a bad impression of an American garbage woman. <laughs> which means my life is a lie. And then the sun came up and I was like, well, time for work. And I show up all frazzled and everyone's like, are you okay? And I'm like, there's a man controlling the radio. He's telling me how short to wear my shorts. He's making me learn dance moves I don't want to dance. He's making me blow dudes. I don't want to learn anything else about the music industry now. I don't, I don't want to find out that like all of Bjork's catalog was written by one gnome in the woods. <laughs> I have a new favorite girl group right now. They're, they're called Fifth Harmony. Do you guys know them? Oh my God, this place is packed with harmonizers. <laughs> That's incredible. Okay, if you don't know, some of you, maybe you know them, maybe you don't. They have a few hits, you do know them. You, maybe you just don't know it's them. They sing the work from home song, that's them. The one that goes, uh, you ain't gotta go to work, work, work. That song is so good. Oh, that song is so good. It makes me think working from home could be more than just melting cheese on things, you know? It lets me dream. They've never worked from home, but who cares? They sing the song, Worth It, that's them. You know, the one that goes, uh, give it to me, I'm worth it. And it has that saxophone riff at the end. That song is so good. Come on, that song is so good. There is video footage of Guy Fieri at a summer music festival where that song is playing. And he's autographing lean cuisines and throwing them out into the audience like this. And people want them. That's how good Fifth Harmony is. People wanted lean cuisines with Guy Fieri's name on them in the middle of a field on a hot summer day with nary a microwave in sight. Find me a better pop band, you won't. Oh, my favorite Fifth Harmony song, it's a bit of a deeper cut. It's called Sledgehammer. Do you guys know that one? Uh, easily the second best song called Sledgehammer. You are not gonna find a, a better second best sledgehammer than theirs. 
That's the one that goes, uh, if you could take my pulse right now, it would feel just like a sledgehammer. <laughs> it makes no sense, right? I, I'm not in construction or whatever, but a sledgehammer seems like the kind of thing you only swing once, <laughs> right? I watched the music video, even the hot guy in the video only swings the sledgehammer once. So if your pulse is like a sledgehammer, you're dead. <laughs> then I realized they meant jackhammer. <laughs> they meant jackhammer. Oh, you guys, they fucking meant jackhammer but no one in their lives does manual labor. So they're just all out there in booty shorts singing about the wrong tool. <laughs> and that's why I love Fifth Harmony. They make mistakes. They're just like you and me, you know? I think the best part about this is some of you guys don't even know who I'm talking about. And one of them has already quit the band. So you gotta get on board with them now because right now they are a four-membered band and they're still called Fifth Harmony. <laughs> it's so beautifully goofy. God, but I think they're better as a four-membered band. I'll tell you why. Because now when you listen to them, you can imagine that you're the fifth. <laughs> And why shouldn't it be you up there dancing with the girls? Like, oh my God, my pulse feels like a screwdriver right now. <laughs> it could be you. <laughs> oh. I've been, uh, I've, things are going good now. I'm, I'm living alone for the first time. It's so exciting. God, I had roommates forever. I got them off of Craigslist. I was so ready to give them back to Craigslist. <laughs> Ooh. But now living alone, I'm realizing the person who does all of the things that annoy me is me. <laughs> now every time I come home, I have this crisis. Like, it is I who cannot wash a dish. <laughs> it is I who leaves one square of toilet paper on the roll. All these pubes <laughs> are mine. <laughs> oh. Do you guys have pubes or? <laughs> I do, I got them. I, I'm, I'm for having pubes, I think we should. I don't know, I was in a long distance relationship for the last two years and it was a very confusing time for me. I felt like I was living a double life pubically because we only saw each other like one weekend a month. So for like three and a half weeks, I'd be like, I'm a wolf. And then for those two days, I'd be like, I'm a little girl. And I just wasn't being true to myself, you know? Man, long distance is so hard. It's so hard. I was in it for two years. And one day I just reached this breaking point. I was like, I can't Skype these tits forever, you know? I gotta be with somebody nearby who can appreciate this modest rack without seeing it buffering, you know? <laughs> Is that so much to ask for? I still have flashbacks sometimes to when we'd be on like Skype or FaceTime trying to be sexy or whatever and the internet connection would drop out and he'd be stuck with a freeze frame of me with my tits out making some Robert De Niro face, like. <laughs> Oh, by the time the connection would come back, I'd already be way down the anxiety spiral. I'd be like, I'm so sorry about the cheapest Wi-Fi package. I'm such an idiot. I always cut corners in the wrong places. They offered me turbo speed, but I didn't know what that meant because it's all coming in through the same wire. How do you know they're giving it to you? Anyway, uh, are you still hard? <laughs> that was the last two years of my love life. So, you know, it's probably good that that's done. <laughs> now I can have the bush of my dreams. <laughs> and I do, and I think, oh man, it's really time for the bush to come back. It just is, because it's been out of style for a while, and in the meantime, dudes all have beards now, and those are on your faces. <laughs> like, can't we have a secret pants beard? Wouldn't that be fair? No one really has to know about it. I just. It's so weird to me. There are guys who are squeamish about women with pubes. They'll be like, duh, I don't like that. And it's like, come on, if you loved pussy enough, wouldn't you dig through anything? <laughs> you, 
You've been served a burger with a salad on the side before. You push it away. It's so simple, you know? And it, it's for women, it's just so exciting to find out who you really are, too, once you let it go. Like, I've been nurturing this one for a little while. Right now, it looks like I'm sitting on Kramer's shoulders. <laughs> That's the look I've got going. Looks like we're gonna show up at your apartment together by surprise. It looks like the weekend is performing in my underwear. <laughs> Every day is a thrill, so. Being single's all right. I, I don't mind, I, I'm on the dating apps, that's not good. Oh boy, I got on Bumble. Nobody was overstating how bad it is. It really is, it's like a haunted house where every guy is a DJ slash entrepreneur or some job you don't wanna be involved with, you know? Like, I matched with a member of the Blue Man group. Like, I'm not too good for a blue man, by the way. I just don't like changing my sheets. So, you know, I was trying to be open-minded about all of this, because I'm new to it, and Bumble's the one where women have to send the first message. So I match with this blue man, I'm like, all right, let's give this a go. Okay, hey, blue man, where does the blue paint stop? <laughs> and he didn't answer, so I was like, well, maybe that wasn't clear. Do they paint the dick? <laughs> and, I didn't hear from him, but you know, he's probably busy doing blue man stuff. You know, drumming on a trash can or whatever it is blue men do. I don't know what blue men do. I've seen the blue man group and I don't know what blue men do. I feel like a blue man could do anything and we'd all be like, that's the show, you know? So we're probably not gonna date, that's okay. I think Bumble is tricky for women because we're not used to starting the conversation. That's new for us. And my dude friends on Bumble all have the same complaint about it. They're like, women all just say, hey, you guys need to get pickup lines. It's like, well, where would we get pickup lines from? There's no female pickup artist teaching us, like, walk up to a guy and be like, aren't you a little ugly to be here? Or <laughs> whatever the trick is. So you all just get, hey, you know? But I get that that's boring, too, so I, I think this is the solution. If you're a lady on Bumble, you should not even open that app unless you have smoked a bunch of weed. <laughs> you gotta be high. Just that way you don't think about it too much. You just say what's on your mind. You know, just start a conversation like, do you think Danny DeVito is happy right now? <laughs> and if he's a cool guy, he'll write you back, you know? Just be like, man, what are spiders even doing? And by the way, what are spiders doing? Just living their lives in a web of their own jizz? It's like, what are you, a guy on Bumble? <laughs> I, I'm working on trying to love myself more. That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to love yourself. Oh, guys. I, I was gonna ask if you guys love yourselves, but it seems like you do. Man, it's so crazy. Sometimes you ask a bunch of people, like, who here loves themselves? And one person will go like, woo! And you can feel everybody else be like, what a piece of shit. <laughs> and, because loving yourself is hard. It takes work, you know? And I'm doing it baby steps, you know? Like, I realized recently it's a lot easier to love other people than it is to love yourself, you know? Like, last weekend, my best friend was coming over. And I love my best friend, so I, I cleaned up my apartment, I took all of the dishes out of my bed, and my bed is home to some of the best Indian food in the city, so it's a big deal when I do that. I, I bought smoked salmon for her, like, I'm a good friend, I bought her smoked salmon. But then she canceled, and I was just left with a clean apartment and all this smoked salmon, and I realized that I don't buy smoked salmon for myself because I don't think I deserve salmon. But I do deserve salmon. I have $10, you know? I deserve salmon and so do all of you. And I'm gonna make you say it with me. I deserve salmon. I deserve salmon. All right, now I'm not getting off of this stage until every one of you motherfuckers admits that you deserve salmon. Let's do this again. I deserve salmon. I deserve salmon. I 
diet deserved salmon like Daryl Hammond in a famine. I deserve salmon or whatever plant-based alternative suits my dietary needs. <laughs> now just the vegans. <laughs> That's good enough for me. Hey, you guys are so great. Thank you so much. <laughs>